Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. We are headed to Atlanta Motor Speedway here today in this NASCAR Heat 5 career mode track that we've had some success at in the past with a top 10 finish earlier in the season. So hopefully we can replicate that here today in this tight playoff battle. Kevin Harvick actually uh, with the win last time we came here. So some hopes for high coming into this one to replicate what we did uh, and get another top 10 finish here in this Votes of Honor Quick Trip 500. And it all starts out of course by getting a good qualifying position here and that's what we were focused on here in this first part of the episode just trying to put in a, a solid solid lap here to set us up well uh, for the actual race here in Atlanta now when it's full throttle around Atlanta Motor Speedway you don't lift unless you're in the slipstream so when you're in the draft uh, you definitely got to get out of the throttle a little bit but it's still not very much so for the most part it is just full throttle racing around Atlanta we put a 30.734 on the board and I went P36. That was not good. You see the rest of the order right there. Brad Kozlowski, Kyle Larson are on the front row. But P36 is absolutely horrendous. I was hoping that we're going to be closer to the midfield of a P20. Uh, obviously, you can tell I was way off there. As you see, Chris Butcher actually failed technical inspection. So he's going to be starting at the back of the grid here now as we're going to get ready to go green in this flow racing number 27. Uh, Richard Childress right, racing Chevrolet Camaro. So we got some work to do here. We want to be able to get ourselves, uh, you know, comfortable in the whole playoff situation as we are underway here from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Green flag is out, and Brent Kozlowski, Kyle Larson lead the field down into turn one, and we, of course, talk about the playoff situation here every single episode, and these closing episodes coming up to the end of this regular season. We know it's close. It's myself, it's Alex Bowman, it's Matt DiBenedetto. We're all separated by less than 20 points, and us three are fighting for two spots, so one of us three is going to get eliminated, but that's, of course, not uh, considering the fact that there could be some more surprise winners on the way here. We have some road courses on the way with Watkins Glen, Indianapolis road course. We have Daytona as well coming up. We have potential field strategies that could come into play. You never really know when the strategies are going to kind of get thrown all around and that can happen any single race here over the next handful of races leading into the playoffs. So there's still certainly a potential for a new winner and if there's going to be a new winner on the season, we just hope it's not somebody that is behind us in the standings. Other than that, we'll be okay. So we just got to hope that's the case. Now as we are continuing Continuing already early on to move our way throughout this grid here. Now, Brad Kozlowski continuing to lead the show, but on lap five here, we are making a three wide move up the inside of Ryan Priest. That 37 car now as we exit turn two, continuing three wide here down the back straight away. James Davidson, I believe that is on the outside here now as we head down into turn three. And this is where we should be able to complete the pass on both of those drivers there. And that's exactly what we would do. So up into P27 we go. And I wasn't anticipating, uh, you know, stage points here in this first and opening stage. We do potentially have a green flag pit stop here in stage one depending on uh, timing of potential cautions, but we are still so far behind here. P27 going for P26. So the odds of us getting stage points are certainly not very high here in this first and opening stage, and we're just hopeful uh, that guys like Alex Bowman and Matt Benedetto don't get stage points, but those are cards that are capable of getting stage points. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. It's still not even halfway through this first and opening stage, and we've nearly gotten towards the top 20 at this point, passing Amarola, uh, passing Michael McDowell, three wide here with Cole Custer as well as as William Byron on the exit of turn two. Actually, we were four wide for a moment because actually McDowell went around the outside there. So he was continuing to make that top work. Not where you usually expect to see Michael McDowell running, but it was working for that number 34 machine. He goes and passes not only myself, Byron, Almarola, but he passes Ty Dillon and he's going to go around the outside. It looks like a bubble Wallace as well who left the door wide open for me to slip up the inside here of that number 23 McDonald's 2311 Toyota Camry. And now we move up into the top half of the field. So we've got good race pace in this car and I feel like that's similar to what we had last time in Atlanta. We had a rough qualifying effort but we had very strong race pace in this car and now we would get up the inside of that 34 McDowell and we would be able to pass him uh, eventually here on lap 12. The caution is actually going to come out. You saw Ryan Blaney coming into the pit line. He was coming in just for a scheduled green flag pit stop but the yellow flag actually flies and that's going to bring everybody anyways into the pit line here. Two cans of fuel, four fresh tires and I didn't know about any adjustments so because uh, the car felt overall pretty good. So I decided to just go with what we had and just fill it up with feel, put some tires on it. Ready to go green now past the halfway point in this second or first in opening stage. Sorry, now Belania Burr inside. I see uh, things that are a little bit promising for us. Alex Bowman's only a few rows ahead, so he is not inside the top 10. Uh, Matthew Benedetto, however, is a little bit closer uh, up there in the mix for that top 10 stage point paying position. So kind of keeping an eye on him. And he's currently the driver out of the playoffs between us three that are battling for it now. And I was stuck on the outside. You don't really want to be on the outside here in Atlanta, especially in a, in a four-star 
a car like we have here with Richard Childress Racing. It's certainly not going to help you whatsoever. And you can see the effects we got passed by the 34. Cole Custer up my inside as well as we came through to cross the line. So he's going to go and move up into P20. So we're down into P21. Some work needed to be done here. We want to get those stage points. We kind of got an opportunity there to close up the field, but we're not really taking advantage of it. Our teammate of Austin Dillon actually briefly took the lead, but he would quickly uh, lose that front uh, running position here as we move up now into 20th place. And now up the inside of the number 42 of Ross Chastain we go. And we are now starting to once again uh, work our way through the grid here. Now up the inside of our rival of Eric Jones, who we don't expect to make it very easy on us here. A little bit of contact with the RPM driver through the center of three, but we clear him on the exit of turn four. Up into P18, we get to the inside of Michael McDowell. We're going to be able to pass him for 17th. So we're closing in on stage points, but just not going to be enough here now. We come right through to the final lap of stage one and still actually stuck behind Ryan Newman here. I'm going to try and look to the outside of him. Briefly tag the wall there on the exit of turn two. Side draft him. Get right on that right rear quarter panel of that number six now as we head down into turn three. No stage points for us here. Unfortunately, Newman was able to get clear right there, so we settle in behind that number six machine. Kevin Harvick wins stage one, so playoff point there to the 2014 Cup Series champion. We crossed the line for P17. Now, uh, it definitely uh, didn't look very promising for us in the closing laps there. We couldn't get quite past that number six of Newman, but overall, I'm not really panicking yet. I think we've got some good pace in this car, so we're going to get ready for stage two, where I actually made a slight adjustment here as well. So, we took four tires, we took feel, but I actually put some more grill tape on the car, because I felt like that could make a little bit of a difference in our favor. Of course, we just got to make sure that we don't overheat the car. That's the thing to pay attention to. It's a little bit risky when you're on the grill tape, and I don't always pay attention to what the temperatures are when we, you know, come into the pit lane, so I didn't quite know where we were running in stage one, but I took the risk and added uh, basically two clicks over to the right of grill tape, so added about 10% grill tape onto the car. We'll see how that affects us here in this second stage. Now, alongside that number eight of Tyler Reddick here, side by side with our teammate here. He's locked into the playoffs now as we exit turn four. Reddick gets clear for that position now as we continue here across the line. P15 right now on lap two of 23, so a little bit shorter here in stage two, but nonetheless, green flag pit stops are necessary if it stays green here. Now, as we fight on this outside, got some good pace there, actually, around the outside here. McDowell, though, would get clear on the exit of turn four. Short run pace in this car, not quite there. And then when we're trapped on the outside, makes it even more difficult for me to be able to hold my own uh, as Chastain and Logano would both get past us. You see the temperature light comes on. So we are overheating a little bit here, and that's certainly going to slow us down a little bit as well. Jones and our teammate of Austin Dillon is going to get past as well, and you can see that temperature light not really going away. So we definitely are going to have to take at least 5% of the grill tape off when we come into the pit lane next in this second stage. But now we were starting to try and claw our way back a little bit here, but we got in this little scrap here with Chastain, with Austin Dillon, with Michael McDowell as well. 17 laps to go in this second stage, and as we came through into turn three and lap seven, we would clear uh, that number 34 of Michael McDowell. So there's one of the positives there. But uh, as we were continuing to move on in this stage, I was realizing we just don't quite have the pace on the exit of turn four. We glide up into the outside wall there. And now both McDowell and Chastain, as well as Custer, are going to get past us there. And I don't know what happened. It's just like the wheel input just went away for a second. And you saw me just basically straight line it into the outside wall, which was an absolutely embarrassing moment right there. But we would continue on. No caution. Green flag pit stops kick off. And here's where I make a bit of a strategy call because Alex Bowman, Matt Benedetto, they're having such good races. We are losing precious points. I decided to do the long-term game and stay out as long as I could and then pit as late as I can. So that way I don't actually have to pit at the end of stage two while everybody else does. So we come into the pit lane here on at lap 19, actually directly in front of Denny Hamlin here who refused to get out of the way. Uh, but we come down into the pits here, 45 mile per hour speed limit there on the pit lane, but we fill it up with feel, put tires on it, take a little bit of grill tape off as well as make a couple of minor repairs to the right side of the car. But we are not going to have to pit at the end of stage two because we're pitting so late. Now, everybody else that's already pitted, like I said, they're going to have to pit again. So we have a chance to take the lead as a caution. The caution's actually flying here, and that's even better. That's perfect case scenario for us at end stage two, and we have no laps of feel, uh, or no laps on feel or tires here for this number 27 car, and both myself and Eric Almarola are allowed to stay out here 
at the end of the second stage. Kevin Harvick did win stage two, but look at this. The strategy call potentially of the season, depending on how this plays out, as we're going to get back underway to start this third and final stage here from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Myself, Eric Gamarola, side by side for the lead right now as we head down into turn one. Kevin Harvick's been so strong here today in Atlanta. He's swept both stages so far. Kyle Larson just behind him. Larson still looking for win number one on the season for the Hendrick Motorsports team. But today, be the day for Kyle Larson. Now, we know that this car is isn't necessarily, uh, you know, strong at the mile and a half. This is certainly not the strong suit for my car here when it's a four-star car. So I wasn't going to treat this stage as I was going to win this race. So I wasn't going to make it the most difficult task in the world for a guy like Kyle Larson or Kevin Harvick to be able to actually pass me here. We do lead the first lap of the stage, so there's a positive. They're leading laps for RCR, but as we head down into turn one, I mean, you can see Larson's just going to cruise by, and he takes the long way around, and he's easily going to pass me, and so is Kevin Harvick, showcasing uh, both the pace in those cars here. But unfortunately, we got up to the outside, and Kurt Bush, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., uh, Chase Elliott, they're all going to come through and pass me on the inside here, and I was just starting to fall down the order because the true pace in this car just wasn't enough today in Atlanta to be able to uh, hang up there in the top five. So down into 10th place, we go Austin Dillon trying to actually shuffle me outside of the top 10 as well here. So I was hoping that we would be able to hold our own around 10th, 11th, 12th area, uh, which is still an improvement uh, based off where we were in stage two, uh, as now actually crashing behind us, tied Dylan goes around a big hit right there with him and Cole Custer. The caution is going to come out here from Atlanta Motor Speedway. No green flag pit stops, or sorry, no yellow flag pit stops necessary here because if we pit now, we cannot make it anyways to the end. So it would be very pointless to come into the pit lane there. But the yellow flag flies and we were P11 at the timing of that caution. So that was a bit fortunate now as we were able to get down to the inside line for this restart, which, as you guys know, especially at a track like Atlanta, exactly where I like to be here with a little bit over 20 laps to go in this race and I'm already thinking I'm not even thinking uh, about you know getting the elbows out racing as hard as I can here I'm thinking about the green flag pit stop that we got coming up because with that caution happening I was very confident a green flag pit stop was going to happen here in stage three we have you know a couple of different options for the strategy here do we want to pit early do we want to pit as late as possible like we did in stage two uh, but this time I was saying you know what let's probably pit a little bit earlier than we did in stage two because if a caution comes out uh, you know just as we're finishing our pit stop by saying it really late they're not all gonna pit again and anyways we're just gonna get probably shuffled down the order uh so we're gonna probably come in a little bit earlier this time and see what happens uh as well you never know we might still get a caution before that actually gets to that point here in this race so nonetheless so trying to hold my own here and we were holding our own relatively well here clearing the number 12 of ryan blaney kind of uh chomping his nose a little bit but uh we would actually try and put the fight now to chase elliott but i see denny hamlin pitting on lap 65 that was my cue i said denny hamlin's pitting i'm coming in as well so uh, a bit of an unexpected expected call. I didn't expect to come in so early, uh, but when I saw him doing it, I said, okay, let's come in as well. So we put four tires on the car. No gambles, no two-tire gamble or anything, and actually, we had such a good pit stop here. You saw how far in behind we came behind Denny Hamlin, and look how much closer we are to that FedEx store to camera here, and look at the difference it would make by pitting a lap or two earlier. We passed Kozlowski, Harvick, Kyle Larson as well. We make up a lot of track position here, but the caution comes out with 14 laps to go, and there were still cars on the track making pit stops. It looks like Elmo Roll is around, but BJ McLeod is going to ruin everything. BJ McLeod did not pit, which meant that everybody a lap down other than the lucky dog and Denny Hamlin gets trapped a lap down because we could not take the wave around. So now we've got nine laps of racing to go and BJ McLeod has trolled the whole field basically here. Uh, not what I expected to see here today in Atlanta. And my first thought was this is absolutely awful for our playoff situation. Uh, but fortunately for us, both Alex Bowman and Matt Benedetto are actually behind us. So all these strategy codes that we've been making today has put the 48 and the 21 behind us uh, when in my opinion I think they got both past their cars in us so this is a huge opportunity here but look at the mess now uh, that we were involved with uh, Kevin Harvick by the way absolutely robbed a victory here today in Atlanta Logano was currently out front but you got a mix of slower cars and faster cars all trying to uh, navigate around each other four wide right there Harvick Elliott as well as the 12 of Blaney the 77 as well of Haley got the elbows up right there they, they did and now I'm actually going to go to the outside of Kevin Harvick as well 
trying to move my way forward here into the top 20, trying to race for the Lucky Dog. You never know. Caution could come out, but we weren't in a Lucky Dog position, uh, unfortunately, here, as there's a crash. It's Boss Chastain who's around in the outside, while in the Caution is going to fly again here in Atlanta with the seven, now six laps remaining in this race, and Logano leads the way, but this is going to set up for an overtime, or at least a two-lap to go finish. I don't know if it's actually overtime. I think it's, it, it is in regulation, so we get back underway, and for some reason, my car doesn't go, and Kyle Larson on back doesn't go, so there's this kind of weird gap in between, and it didn't close up till approaching the final lap here in Atlanta Motor Speedway now to the outside of Blaney, and unfortunately, you know, we made the right calls today with strategy, but it just didn't work out with the timing of a late caution, and this final lap gets underway, and Kurt Busch takes the lead on the final lap here in Atlanta Motor Speedway now, so we're going to try and look to the outside of Chase Elliott here down the back straight away. This is a point right here, and such an important point it is, and he's going to fight because he knows who I'm fighting against, his teammate of Alex Bowman. Through three and four for the final time, Kurt Busch leads away at a turn four. He is going to come through to win in Atlanta. We're going to be in a drag race right here with the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet of Chase Elliott to the line. We cross it. It's three wide with him in the 77. Unfortunately, though, uh, we just couldn't quite beat that nine of Elliott there. So Elliott gets P17. We get P18. Truex, Logano, Jones, and Bubba Wallace round out the top five behind Kurt Busch there, the winner of this race from Atlanta Motor Speedway. And overall, uh, the main thing is in stage one, stage two, we didn't get stage points, but with everything that, how it worked out, uh, stage three, we were able to beat both Alex Bowman and Matt DiBenedetto. So that certainly uh, was more of a damage, damage, damage control uh, kind of strategy that we played and it actually worked out. So uh, one of the few times that we do a damage control kind of strategy and it actually pays off for us. So you'll see the playoff grid here in just a moment. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, you know what to do. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time of your day for watching it. And if you enjoyed, you know what to do. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. Those would all be so appreciated. But Matt Benedetto, 12 points below the cut line now after uh, that to race in Atlanta. So we currently are in the playoffs, but not safe. We go to New Hampshire. Not sure what to expect there uh, at the Magic Mile there. But you see we have four points over Alex Bowman after that one. So we're not even the last car in anymore. So getting a little bit closer to Austin Dillon as well. But that does it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one where we try to get the lobster in New Hampshire. Hampshire. Have a great day, everybody.